For example, what reasons do we have to believe that we do indeed have adequate perceptual capacities without reference or recourse or reliance on observation for fear of psychology? Well, I, I mean, scientists are developing um, perceptual abilities that take us far beyond the use of our eyes. And it's the whole panoply of uh, scientific apparatus, really, including uh, the, the collider in, in, in CERN and so on, which extend our ability to explore nature. So uh, science is all about extending our perceptual ability. Telescopes, microscopes, and all the machinery of science. Uh, and um, you know, telescopes not just in the visible region of, of the spectrum, but throughout the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, ways of exploring not just electromagnetic radiation, but perhaps gravitational radiation as well, which we are not sensitive to. So our, 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 our perceptual theatre is enormous and, and goes far beyond just a, a single human head. and the Stephen Gordon were both distinguished supporters of the BHA. Um, has science any role to play in humanistic philosophy? And do you agree that the BHA strategy does not include science? Stephen, this is your question. Sorry, just hit the last bit again. Does, uh, do you agree that the BHA strategy does not include any reference to science? What would it be like for us if the strategy did include reference? What did you have in mind? What well, can we um, I had in mind that the BHA strategy claims that we use uh, reason uh, as part of uh, understanding the world. Right. It well, then, it, it I bet that's a big old kind of word. Yeah. My guess, my guess is that uh, reason is understood to encompass science. That would be, my, that would be, that would be how I would read that. And, and if you feel that it really ought to have its own word in there explicitly, well, I'd have a little bit of sympathy with that, actually. Yeah, if that's your point. Yeah. But I, the, the, the suggestion that the BHA is, 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 is a sort of closet anti-science organisation, um, pro-philosophy and doesn't much rate, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely sure that's not true. Sure. I'm sure you don't think that. I, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> Okay, uh, I noticed the very last question comes from someone in the Jesus College, so that's always good. <laughs> yes, that's no, um, Given that matters of, of matter and existence are intrinsically scientific questions, Professor Reckons, would you say that philosophy has no part to play um, in answering these questions um, with regards to the existence of deity? Cool, that's ended, that sentence ended in a very strange way. I don't think that philosophy clarifies thought. I will concede that. Um, and I, but it doesn't provide um, a reason for thinking one way or another. So I suppose the answer is no, ultimately, to that question. <laughs> I started thinking about something else. <laughs> I was thinking about, I, said, I just mentioned what I was thinking about, because it just popped into my head. It is completely, you know, totally tangential. Um, but actually, it kind, of, it kind of rounds things up a bit, because I was thinking about Galileo's two balls, which I was going to, you know the famous you know, yeah. experiment, yeah. So, you, know, you, you release a big ball and a small ball, a heavy ball and a light ball. Is one going to fall more quickly than the other one, or will they fall at the same speed? Um, Galileo thought about that, he sat in his armchair and he thought it through. He thought, <clears throat> if, if the big ball falls faster than the small ball and we chain them together, <clears throat> then the small ball is going to act as a brake on the big ball to slow the whole thing down, won't it? Because the, the small ball would be, would be travelling less fast and so it will slow the whole thing up. But on the other hand, you've now got a small ball and a big ball joined together. 
So that's even heavier than the two things separate. So it's going to go even faster now. You've got a contradiction there in the idea that one of the balls will fall faster than the other because it's heavier. Conceptual engineering reveals the truth about reality. The two balls will fall at the same speed. But you also that's have to apply that. That's wonderful, that's wonderful thinking. <coughs> but you have to apply the same kind of thinking to the mirror problem. Exactly. It's, philo it's a philosophical puzzle. But the, the Galileo one. Puzzle. Is, oh, of course. It's a <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, now I'm with you now. So, so you want to say. No, I'm not with you. No. <laughs> you, can, you can anticipate the result of the observation that you're going to make. And science is about anticipating what you expect to see, and then maybe finding uh, refutation when you actually go out and make the observation. But the point about the, the, the thought experiment is it is a conceptual, ref conceptual refutation of a certain physical theory, which turns out to be actually conceptually incoherent. You don't even need to do the experiment with, uh, the, with the ball, which is, which is... But suppose you did and you found something. <laughs> 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 we know you can't because look what's going to happen with the, with the, I mean that's precisely what the thing about the mirror puzzle is that left and right and top, up, up and down um, if, you, if you think about the science what happens top to bottom left to right is all precisely the same the light is reflected off the mirror in exactly the same way and so why does it ref reflect left to right rather than top to bottom I personally I think the answer is that um, it all depends which way you put yourself in the position of the mirror person. Mm. So that if you push the normal way is to do this, right? You, you, you go around the vertical axis, and then you'll be over there, but it'll be left to right switch. Whereas if we had the, if we were like birds and we could fly through the air, I could come down head first over there, and then head top to bottom would be reversed, but not left to right. But you could also do it with no, that, that was conceptual engineering. I did it in my head. Yeah, but you could do it with geometrical optics as well. It's just, it's just, you know, okay. purely conceptual. You don't need to do an experiment. You can just figure it out by thinking about but it. In fact, science is useful. You should do an experiment to make sure that it's what is anticipated. It's true. I think this discussion could go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no prediction to test. There's nothing to test. It's just an explanation of why it is that something. Why it's that way around rather than that way? Why, why we, it is that we say it reverses left to right rather than top to bottom? That's it. There's no, you can't test it because it doesn't make a prediction. Well, well why can't you test um, it? Um, What's a prediction? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
the policy is formed and debate happens uh, uh, in this country at a political level and that that has adverse uh, consequences for uh, non-religious people, potentially for a very long time to come because this could be the last uh, census. Uh, so I just want to conclude uh, with a few what uh, is, how and why questions. There is a British Humanist Association and I'm the head of membership so I have to say that you ought uh, uh, to join it. Uh, why? Because we are involved in a huge uh, number of areas. There are humanist celebrants up and down the country performing humanist uh, weddings and funerals, giving a sort of value-laden edge to those big uh, life moments. We have an education agenda, a huge public affairs uh, remit. Uh, and how, well, there's a first step, there's a, a little slip on your uh, chairs by which you can use your email address and then you'll come into my database and I, know I will never let you go uh, until you become a member some years down the line after carefully, after carefully considered uh, track down the, uh, the supporter uh, route and uh, it would be uh, uh, lovely to see you all at, at other uh, VHA events in the future. Thank you very much again to everyone and especially the organisers of tonight, I doubt which no one would be. Thank you.